The test I'm about to do today is going to destroy two perfectly good engines. I'm going to run both these engines without any lubrication in the crankcase and see how long they last. In one, I'm going to pre-treat it with Slick 50. In the other, I'm just going to use 30 weight oil. And then I'm going to go ahead and drain off both of the crankcases and run these engines totally dry to see which one lasts. So why am I doing this? About 25 years ago, there used to be this commercial of this vehicle that had Slick 50 added to the crankcase and then drained out. And they used to show this engine running uh, for hours on end without any oil in the crankcase as if you didn't need oil in your engine once you use Slick 50. And Slick 50 also claims that it reduces the heat buildup. So before I drain the crankcase, I'm going to get these engines up to full operating temperature and I'm going to measure the difference in temperature between the engine with Slick 50 and the engine with SAE 30 weight oil. So anyway, this is going to be a pretty good video today. Look forward to showing you the results. The instructions on this Slick 50 say to use 10% if your vehicle holds 6 quarts or more. But I want to go ahead and make it about 20%. So these lawnmower engines should hold around 20 ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and add 4 ounces of Slick 50. And you can see this looks like it's about a 30 weight oil. So it's not going to hurt to use more of it. The key is, is we just want to make sure we get plenty in there. So, okay, that right there is four ounces. So this is our Slick 50 jar. We go ahead and add the four ounces. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add regular SAE 30 weight oil to this mix. And this is about 20 ounces right up in here. So it doesn't have to be exact, it needs to be fairly close. Okay, it's about 20 ounces right there. And in this jar, I'm just gonna use straight oil. Okay, it looks virtually identical. The Slick 50 looks like it's a little bit darker, but you can see there's air bubbles in each. So this is the regular 30 weight oil. I'm going to add about half of this and I'm going to see how much I need to continue to add. Okay, as you can see, the oil level is full. This is the engine that has the SAE 30. All right, just making sure it's all mixed up. Now I'm going to add the jar with the Slick 50 into this engine. As you can see, the oil level is full. So to make sure we don't get, I don't get confused in this project, I've identified the engine with Slick 50, by I've labeled it with Slick 50, and this here is just the 30 weight oil. Again, this is to keep me from getting confused and mixing up the two engines. So as you can see, Slick 50 did a good job as far as keeping the engine cool. I'm sort of surprised. The cylinder head temperature was down and so as you saw we measured the crankcase temperature as well and it was down. Um, it's about, it's running 10, 20, 30 degrees cooler or more than the engine that does not have the Slick 50 in it. So maybe there's something to this. The, the next test is going to be the ultimate test, the ultimate torture test, which is going to destroy most of, both of these engines. I'm going to drain the oil out of both engines all the way and just run these engines dry and see how long they last. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drain the Slick 50 out of the crankcase. And as you notice, I've got this engine tilted so the oil runs straight this way to this, this drain. We're going to go ahead and pull out the straight SAE 30 and let's see if there's any difference in the, the color of this oil. The Slick 50 oil is a lot darker than the SAE 30. They both look really dark, but this is more of a, a brown. This is clearly uh, almost a black. So this is the SAE 30, and this is the Slick 50. 
So now it's time for the ultimate test. Okay, so as you can see, the temperature of both engines is very similar. They're 88, 80, 88, 89, about the same. The dipsticks on both are taped to the front of the engines. So um, there might be a little bit of oil splatter coming out just from any sort of um, oil that's on the crankshaft right now that's spinning around. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine with Slick 50 first. Uh, and then of course start this one. I can't start them at the same time. But for whatever time difference there is between the two engines, so if I start this one 20 seconds sooner than this one, I will subtract the 20 seconds at the end as far as which engine seizes up first. So I'm going to go ahead and start this clock and then try to get these engines started. Okay guys, both engines have seized up. It's been about seven minutes since we started this test. And I'm gonna walk around real quickly and just show you that neither engine has any drain, or has the uh, dipstick in it. So this is the conventional oil. And this is the engine with Slick 50. As you can see, there isn't any sort of oil leakage or anything, so both of these engines were dry. And much to my surprise, the engine with, six, with Slick 50 locked up way quicker than the engine with 30 weight oil in it. So quite shocking, quite, quite uh, surprising uh, development. I thought the Slick 50 would have lasted twice as long, but not the case. Look how hot this engine is though. 420 degrees, look at the smoke coming off that engine. Man, that thing is hot. That thing is really hot. That engine is locked up tight. There's no saving that engine. Neither one of these engines can be spared. They're both run. Guys, I used to use Slick 50, and I really liked watching their commercials 25 years ago, and I was sort of a believer. I spent a lot of money on Slick 50 trying to preserve my engines. Maybe I'm missing the point. Maybe this product can do something that I don't realize, but Quite frankly, it gave up far before the regular motor oil did, and that's pretty discouraging. Is there a product that's better than Slick 50, that's better than conventional oil, that truly can stick to engine parts and make the engine last longer? If there is, please put in, your com put in some comments in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. I read your comments. I spend a lot of time replying, and um, would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Anyway, I hope you don't feel as though this video um, is being wasteful. This is truly an experimentation process for me. I am very interested in learning if the claims the manufacturers make are accurate. And so I try to run these tests as fairly as possible to see what kind of results we get. But I want to say thank you very much for watching the video and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.